Welcome back. It's the bonus episode. If you listened to episode eight, you probably heard us mention that JJ and I were huge fans of Game of Thrones, and we managed to keep quiet about it during the show pretty much because we don't want to ruin things for people, especially on a show that's unrelated to Game of Thrones. But I think that uh, we can't be silent anymore, JJ. The season has ended. There has been momentous happenings in the world of Game of Thrones, and I want to talk about them, and you want to talk about them. Well, this so is... Let's talk about them. <laughs> this is We Were Gamers. Bonus. Game... B -b -b bonus. B boner. Can you do the echo? Bonus, bonus, bonus. Bonus, bonus, bonus. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I think there I, should be a sub... We can use some effects on this. You know, maybe we'll do it in post. I don't think I have that in me. No, we're not going to do it. Right, uh, sorry. <laughs> we sorry should think of a good up. subtitle. <laughs> We should have thought of a good subtitle before starting. Like, too late. We were Game of Thronesers. That is so forced. It's nah. really bad. No, nah. no, nah, we'll just call it bonus episode something something. Okay, so for those of you that listen to our show but maybe didn't catch it, we're gonna just talk about everything that happened. So if you're not fully caught up, don't okay, hold listen. on. This is, uh, this is we are talking about up to Game of Thrones season six episode ten, which is the end of the sixth season. Uh, if you don't, haven't watched every single one of those episodes and want to know about every single thing related to Game of Thrones, because we're putting all of it on the table, this is gonna have some book talk too. By the way, that's right. Yeah, for sure. We're gonna talk about stuff that hasn't happened, stuff that might happen, stuff that people think could happen, and a bunch of other stuff. So just if you don't want to know. Turn it off. That's my spiel. All right. Well, now that they're all gone. Yeah. All what right. an episode. Did you... Man. Woo! Just from the beginning, did you feel like this was a... Fa There's a huge uh, schism. Kiz schism? Schiz chasm? Uh, schism? Schism? Schism is how you pronounce yeah, that word. Yeah, schism. Uh, in the internet about whether this was bad and fan service or good because people have just seen where it's going and they finally got there and they did it really well okay i don't know who is on that first camp because i'm in that second camp i i haven't seen a lot of opinions hanging around that first side i think a lot of people kind of like fell off the rails with the the uh john stark resurrection at the beginning of the season and john then... snow no one's called him john snark yet oh well we kind of became are allowed to call him stark right are we? I don't know. Lady Mormont said it was okay. John Targaryen? <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. They didn't really say who the father was, did they? I mean, it's very heavily implied, but, you know, I mean, they didn't outright say it so was Rhaegar Targaryen. So I think Rhaegar maybe Targaryen. they didn't go too deep. All right, hold on, hold on. Let's, I know, I know, I know. We're starting at the end. We should start at the beginning. Okay. Let's start at the beginning start. of this episode. Well, should we talk about the season at all before we get into the episode? How'd you feel? Didn't you just reread all the books before this season? Yes. Yes, so I finished book five, uh, I want to say like after episode one maybe, or a little bit before it. Okay, so now having reread the books, seen the show up yeah. to season six, then started season six, how did that leave you with previous seasons, your feelings on previous seasons, and how did that leave you in, during, and after this season? I want to hear because I haven't had a chance to reread them. Okay, so uh, I really really did not like almost everything that happened in season five. Uh, maybe by the end of season five, it got its act together. Um, but at least through the middle and at most of season five, it was pretty bad. So especially in relating to the Dorn plot of season five, uh, and basically everything the Dornish kind of did that whole season uh, did not, like I did not have a lot of faith in the writers of the show after that. Uh, I think by the end of the season, maybe they finally got their act together. Some of the stuff that happened at the end was pretty good, but by the end of season five, I was n having also read the book. Right at the end of the book five, I sort of felt like a lot was left in the bat, like hanging, uh, in the same way that the end of season five felt. So it was kind of equivalent there. But the books of the show have sort of diverged so much in terms of characters and stuff, uh, it's really hard to uh, sort of see the parallels, especially now at the end of six, where we are at like 
stuff is completely different, right? Like they've moved so far beyond what the book stuff did. Um, I, just, I really have a lot of dis, like I really was not happy with a lot of season five and some of the parts of season four. Now, one of the things with Dorne, especially now that we know where Dorne has ended up at the end of season six right. and where Dorne was mid last season and how much time they spent there, I so don't unearned. understand the pacing difference of the show. I still really like the show and I like where it's going, um, but I think I understand those people that think it's a fan service because the pacing of the show over the course of four and a half seasons, five seasons ish has gone from the plotting arch it's really storytelling uneven, right? in yeah, the it, books to now it feels like I'm watching everything on fast forward. Yeah. It's really uneven. Uh, and I think a lot of that, it was sort of the writers, uh, hoping or maybe George R. R. Martin, uh, telling them to slow it down so that the, his hope was he would release book six before this season of the show uh obviously that didn't happen uh hard to say you know if that was who's i mean i don't know you can't tell people to do art better right or faster so we're not gonna you know place blame here but you maybe could say that one of these you know decisions influenced the other i don't know hard to hard to say there but definitely the show in the last couple seasons felt sort of slow and methodical uh, and not a lot got done, whereas in this season, stuff just popped off constantly. Yeah, and it feels like, um, especially in the last episode, which we'll get into, they're just like, okay, well, George is out of the way. We're doing our own thing now. Axe half of this stuff. We're just moving on to the end. Or like, yeah, they they took the stuff, that the, the big threads that were hanging out there in the story, and they're like, all right, we're tying up this one, we're tying up this one, putting a bow on that. These people are done. Here we go. End game. Let's go. Like, point all the people towards the end of the story. Let's do it. Is it interesting to me? It's kind of just like, you guys, let's just end it before it gets bad. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, so, do you want to talk about uh, the last episode here? Yeah, let's, let's, let's delve into the finale and then look backward and forward and all sides afterwards. Okay. How did you like that opening sequence with the piano and violins? And Andrew, have you seen The Godfather? <laughs> I think it's Godfather Two. It, uh, yeah, you think you're very reminiscent for sure. With uh, with Michael Corleone, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody uh, gets dressed. Uh huh. And they're all the music is playing and the whole thing, right? He's sitting there at his at his baptism, you know. Cersei is sitting there in the in her throne room, sipping some wine, hanging out. Uh, you know, plausible deniability that literally no one on earth will ever believe. Everybody knows she did it. It doesn't matter. Totally she doesn't knows. even care about denying it. Yeah, and, she didn't even uh, care about putting the fires out. She didn't even try to save, you know, her uncle or uh, any of the people who, in theory, should be innocent. A funny thing I saw, and uh, I should mention, I really wanted to rewatch the episode because I want had some thoughts that I wanted to clear up, but you're just going to have to do it for me. Okay. But an interesting thing that I saw was every instance of foreshadowing with Cersei um, blowing up the town with wildfire mm -hmm. was like, if they do this, I'll burn them all to the ground. Or if they do this, I'll burn them all to the ground. <laughs> Oh, she says stuff like that all the time. Yeah, yeah. There's several instances of Cersei saying, I would burn a town to ashes to save my children uh, or, like, to protect my family or to get revenge. Like, she says that stuff over and over and over. Uh, and was it season four or season five? Uh, do you remember there was a flashback scene uh, where Cersei had a prophecy told to her by a witch? Yes. Uh, and the witch says, uh, there will come a queen younger and more beautiful than you, and all your children will die, and the happiness will turn to ash in your mouth or something like that. Mm -hmm. And we all assumed that was Marjorie. And Cersei certainly did, uh, and it doesn't look like that's who they were talking about. All her children are certainly dead, though. <laughs> so the witch's prophecy seems to have come true because of Cersei, not because of the prophecy. Like sort of, a again, that flat loop of time stuff oh, like okay 
Time is a flat circle, people. Yeah. Always and forever. For those of you that don't understand Bran Stark. That's right. Please go look at extra dimensionality and time is a flat circle. Do not call it time travel. That's right. There has been no time travel in this show. Uh, Bran can uh, seems to have some kind of ability to influence the past in some kind of way. Uh, but all of that influencing already happened. Yes. Understand that Bran is not time traveling and changing. Bran is and always has been right. part of the universe fabric, as has that's the right. three-eyed raven and everything else. Time is a flat circle. Right. And so that's why the reason why Hodor has been messed... No, the reason why episode nine was so sad oh, gosh. Uh, and why Hodor has been the way he is the whole show is because of what Bran did at the end of that episode that has caused Hodor to be that way the whole time. It wasn't like Bran retroactively did it, right? It's always been that way. It was always going to be that way, unavoidable. And for those people that did listen to a previous episode where we talked about spoilers, that was the spoiler that multiple people put all sorts of real things out there that really spoiled it for people, but that I thought was some of the best and still might even be the best scene from this show, even though this episode was amazing and mm-hmm. other episodes of the show has been amazing, and I love other TV that's amazing. That still, to this day, haunts me. That idea that, and the wet representation of screwy nature of extra dimensional travel, or not travel, but you know, being essentially, and how messed up it is. I mean, sort of the the fatedness of everything, right? Like there is no way to escape fate, right? Yeah, and a lot of people don't like that. You think you're going back to the past to change it, but it's unchangeable, right? You can, you are only causing what happened in the past to already happen. Well, yeah, but so you get into, if you talk time travel, like you get into the fact that you actually cannot time travel because you can't go to the past, which means right. you could only travel to the future technically, um, but you'd have to be able to travel faster than light, and you can't do that. I, you're talking like, you know, physics and like actual reality right. time travel yeah. which thankfully this show has no need to adhere to because magic yes exactly uh, but it seems that the magic doesn't let them actually go to the past it just lets them uh you know sort of cause things to have happened that already happened i think just a lot of people don't like the idea especially in television of people telling you you have no fate control and that sure like no free basically will. like all that that's happening in the show these characters have no choice or whatever mm-hmm yeah, it's it's very fatalist. Um, which is sometimes hard to swallow. But back to it's Cersei and blowing everybody up. Also very grim. Very grim. How do you... Do you believe that decision based on the the course of the season? Oh, n- totally. Totally. Uh, it's, w- it's perfectly within her character. I don't think that part was uh, strange at all. Uh, it surprised me a little bit, all of the people that were killed. I did not expect Marjorie to be killed. Uh, that quickly, uh, or at least in that way. Uh, She seemed like she was a little bit too smart for all of that uh, and sort of sucks that she got outmaneuvered by Cersei, who I think is not generally the most cunning character. She sort of just acts impulsively. That seems to follow her track in the books, though, because everyone that always is plotting around her gets screwed because they... She doesn't think. She just acts. Cersei? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Uh, She is a very impulsive character who just sort of acts on her whims and and feeling. Uh, And this was her lashing out at people she thought had wronged her, uh, which is seems like perfectly well within her character. Uh, So I'm not that surprised that she did it. Uh, More that I was surprised that Marjorie got caught by it. Yeah, I mean, she did figure it out, but the sparrow killed them, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Thank gosh that thread's over with. The Sparrow? Yeah, I didn't dislike him as a character or the idea of reinvoking religion and all that, but mm-hmm. and in the vein of the show, it's just like frustrating to know that this has no bearing on anything. And one of the reasons why they clearly just nixed it out of the way so that it could be what the Lord of Light versus the Night King and that's it. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. The uh well, uh, we'll talk about what happened about with the Lord of Light uh, in a little bit later in the episode. 
but I, I want to one other thing in King's Landing before we move on. I was actually surprised that Tommen uh, killed himself. Katie, <laughs> Katie said to me, she's like, well, he went off screen, so he's probably not dead, right? And I was like, kid, he jumped out the top of the red keep. Yeah, I thought that also for the first time. I was like, oh, and you're going to see, like, Gregor Clegane, like, standing under the balcony, like, holding him up, be like, nah, kid, I'm smarter than you. But, nah, son, he did. I was I was the only person, we watched it with uh, two other people, and I was the only person in the room that was like, I think Tommen just died. Everybody yeah. <laughs> I think, uh, it... it it happened so fast. Yeah, I don't know that I... So this is why it caught me off guard. I sort of thought he felt like he was getting a handle on things. I don't think so. I think he was just being plotted along. He, I mean, he was getting turned around every time somebody told him what sure. to do. Yeah, I, I just, I guess I just didn't buy his character deciding, nah, I'm done. Uh, like, uh, there's no way I can come back from this. Um, you know, grief over losing your wife or whatever. But like, how much time do you really actually get to spend with his wife? Right? I don't know. I think you take into account the amount of evil he's seen in his entire life. Sure. And he's already put two and two together that his mother basically has murdered everyone. Yeah. I, I mean, I I think the scene is really good. Uh, I just didn't buy the character feeling that way. Okay. I I think I believe it. I I don't okay. think that I would fault that one entirely I, I mean it goes it's a great ending to that character because of what it sh- like when cersei goes to see him later right and Cer- she's like looking at the body or whatever like she doesn't give a single fuck with right like i uh, swearing but the she literally looks at her son's dead body like show me the face right she looks not a tear just like stone cold right you could tell she already thought that kid was dead Interesting that she also didn't try to bring him back. Yeah, right. She brought Clegane back. He was totally dead. Well, uh, almost dead. Ah, he was dead. Come on, he's a zombie. <laughs> uh, and it's like you know, you, you, I just was. Uh, yeah, I think she would have still blown it up if he had been there. That's why I think. I think she would have blown the church up with him inside it, because he was lost already. Right, like when he told her. No trials by combat, mom. Like, you know, he basically said it to her, although he didn't. Uh, you know, she was like, all right, he's dead. My son has betrayed me. It's over. Everyone has to die. I half for a second thought to myself uh, in the middle of that scene, do I want Lancel to blow these out? Like, it was such a tragic thing happening that you were yeah. like, can he do it? And you you were kind of like yeah. weirdly You knew it was rooting. the false hope the whole time. Yeah. I knew. You, we were kind of like weirdly rooting for him in sure. a way. You're like, well, you don't want to see all really these people deserve murder. it. And some of these people don't deserve it. Yeah. Especially the, you know, the most tragic thing, uh, thankfully they didn't do would have been him blowing it and the blowing causing it to blow up. Right. Well, I think even worse would have been if he'd put out two out of three of them. Oh, and let the third one blow or the third one happen. Couldn't get couldn't to the get third one. Time. Yeah. That, that would have been I think the what extension. happened was the right thing. Yeah, just let it happen. Obviously, um, wow that that I mean, just opening the episode from there, I didn't right. think it could get. It better. seems like that would be the kind of thing you would end the episode with, and yet they didn't. Yeah, that was the opening to the episode. So where did yeah. it go from there? I can't remember. Uh, so I think the next we teleported thing... to Dorne. I think right. Uh, did we go immediately to Dorne after this? Maybe not. I don't know. Well, we could talk about Dorne. You know, I mentioned that I did not have a lot of like for Dorne last season. Did the teleporting bother you? Um, Elena teleporting to Dorne immediately after and knowing that Cersei had killed Marjorie and well, then Varys being in Dorne and then teleporting back to Marine. So uh, I think the show has done this before. I know some of the actors have gotten out there on Twitter and sort of said, hey, you know, the time stuff. It's not always like literally, you know, cut. It's the same time. Uh, there's, you know, time passes and that stuff. You noticed Elena was wearing black, so she had clearly heard about what had happened. Um, yeah. I think that the implications of time passage mm-hmm. took a lot longer in the first couple seasons because of the pace of the books. It sure. felt like, well, they didn't haven't seen Arya in two weeks, so 
clearly she's moved from one place to another. Right. Whereas now we're at a pace which with fewer characters, we don't have to cover as much. So in the same episode, somebody could, in theory, sail from you know Marine to Dorn and Dorn to Marine. There was no there was no weird timeline gap there. It just meant that he had you know in between scenes gotten back there without explanation. So it doesn't bother me entirely. Well, I think the issue is that in previous seasons, when time would pass like that, they would have a throwaway line or something explaining it, right? Be like, oh, we've been riding on this horse for six months. I can't believe we took us so long to get here, right? Like that kind of thing. All they needed was a couple lines like that. Uh, I think in the Olena scene, they did say stuff like that, so it was kind of okay, right? Like, you know, she clearly mentioned she had known about it. She had to get to Dorne, right? She had only just left the city like the episode before, Um they did some of that. I think the one that is super unearned is at the very end of the episode, uh, like you said, where Varys shows back up in Marine. Right? He was in the sa- like within the same episode. He moved across the world, um, and yeah, you know, like look, obviously it took a long time to paint all those sails and stuff, right? Though, so, like he had some time uh, to do all that, but it's not. Yeah, I, I, they needed like one line or one shot of Varys coming back on a boat and saying hi to. Daenerys, who he hasn't really ever talked with that I know uh, or remember. Yeah, uh, weird that they didn't uh-huh. have a meeting between those two. Yeah, so I, I was kind of disappointed in that. I mean, the episode was long by the show standards anyway. Um, but yeah, it's, I was sort of bothered by that part of it, like sort of Varys's jetpack, as some people have called it. Now, if I can remember correctly... For people that that does bother, I think that if you were to look at a map, that Dorne and Marine are literally the two closest places between the two continents. Uh, probably, but that's I, I mean, but I again, no research for this show. Yeah, good storytelling indicates that you should prompt the viewer to be like, "Hey, a little bit of time has passed here." Well, and- no, no meeting. You just brought up a really good point, which was no meeting between Varys and Daenerys. That's kind of insane. Right, he's just standing on the ship with her and Tyrion, and everyone is just like, "Hey, I'm I'm one of the gang." That like, doesn't make any sense. Yeah, yeah, not a big fan of that part. Uh, well, I but- do. You know, they did it for the the image, right? But sure, totally. Meh. Yeah. Uh. So let's see the. Uh, the other stuff, uh, we had Littlefinger and Sansa up in the the north. Okay, so let's talk about Sansa for a minute. Yeah. Sansa. Sure. And this goes back a few episodes. Okay. All right. She's um, she's kidnapped by Ramsay, or she's sold to Ramsay, essentially. She's with Ramsay. I think we can all agree that Littlefinger probably knew exactly what he was doing when he gave her to him. Right, guaranteed. He just, sort of, he just sort of hoped it would work out differently. What? What differently? Uh, maybe that she would have outsmarted him in some other way, other than you know having her get raped and stuff. I don't understand how it could have worked out differently. And that's part of Sansa's point: is like you you left me here for your own devices. Basically, oh, totally. Yeah, he totally did that. Um. And now he kind of looks like a fool all the time, and we'll get back to that. But so Sansa escapes Ramsay. She says to, um, what's his name from the Iron Islands? Um, Theon or Yara. Theon, yeah, Theon and Brienne. Like the only oh, person yeah, in the North we can trust is my brother John. Mm-hmm. We have to go to John. John will, you know, um, make sure that we don't get murdered. So, cut to Castle Black, where she is reunited with John and says, "Oh my gosh, you're the you know only family I've got left. I treated you so horribly. I'm sorry I treated you so horribly. You know mm-hmm. this is horrible what happened to you. Um, but let's you know it doesn't matter now. We're the only two people we have left. And you know John agrees to all that. Cool. Okay. Cut to Littlefinger magically being in the north." for a meeting with her where she tells off Littlefinger and says... I mean, I don't know. He sort of said he was going to ro- take the army to the north before, so sure. I didn't think okay. it was magical that he was there. No, it was just magical that he's like alone in a building and nobody knows about it. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, the north is big. He's one dude on a horse. Sure. Okay, so uh, fine. Um, they have the meeting. He says, She says basically like, 
you didn't play me, but you played your game and you sent me up here and you but knew about it. She basically tells him, like, get out of here, dude. Yeah. Like, Stuff it. Yeah, I don't ever want to talk to you again. Yeah, I don't want to play your dumb game. All right. So then uh, let's cut to, let's roll around trying to get armies, uh, which she does a horrible job at trying to do when she's just like, remember you owe us. And where John's playing the, like, please help us for the North's sake game. They both suck at it, but she only tries once, really, to, like, rally people. Uh, And then they have to attack, and she says they have to attack Winterfell now because... Hold on. So you skipped a part where she wrote a letter. No, no, no. Hold on. She says, before she writes the letter, she tells John, hey, they have Rickon. We have to go attack Winterfell and get Rickon back. Uh-huh. Then they don't get enough of an army, so she writes the letter, which we assume is to Littlefinger. I mean, to, it's pretty clear. Yeah. yeah, to get an army. Doesn't tell John about Littlefinger, mostly because we assume that John would be upset about the meeting because he's, you know, she told him what little what Littlefinger did. Mm-hmm. But then doesn't tell John about the possibility of another part of an army. And then, in addition to that, in beginning of the battlefield, says, oh, Rickon's already dead. We shouldn't attack. What's the point? It doesn't even matter. You're going to get played and you're going to get killed. Uh, and then right in the meeting in the middle of the battlefield, to Ramsey's face, says that he's going to die. This is incongruous unless you assume off screen that she's plotting to use John as bait and get him killed and take over everything with Littlefinger's army, which she already knows is there. No, I think you're misinterpreting what's going on here. Or at least the way I saw it is that she just doesn't trust that Littlefinger will honor his agreement to show up. She says, hey, I need you, come help me. Uh, Maybe he says, okay, I'm going to come. But she doesn't trust him because he's not a trustworthy person, as we have seen throughout the show. So she doesn't tell John anything because he needs to be able to plan and win with what he knows he can count on. So she doesn't confide in him, which she admits to in the last episode, uh, because she didn't trust Littlefinger, uh, which is probably right. Uh, and it turned out to work out, thankfully, in their favor, because so that all of them didn't die. But uh, I don't know that she was wrong not to confide in John, there, or to not tell him about that. I took it a different way, which was she has been trained now by Littlefinger to be deceptive when she doesn't need to be. And it and in that case, basically could have gotten them killed if he had known like. I mean, she she how did the army show up randomly without her knowing? And then she's also riding at the front of it. It obviously didn't show up without her knowing. She at some point knew it was going to come. Oh, well, she at some point knew. They said they were going to come. She just didn't know that they were actually going to show up. So why not tell your brother who's riding in the middle of his death what's going on at that point? Maybe she didn't know at that point. Like we don't like obviously some stuff with her happens off screen that we don't know about. Maybe a maybe a bird flies in as the army is coming over the hill. It just doesn't make sense for it to happen off screen because you don't. There's no way to know. It happens off screen because tension. It happened well clearly. So, so there's two there's two answers basically. They did all that as a plot device to make you nervous that the Knights of the Vale aren't going to show, or she's an evil genius and plotting against John. And my plotting against John theory is strengthened by the fact that she is upset that he doesn't confi- like ask her her opinion in the War Council, and then also in this episode. No, he does. Like so, then he after she gets mad about him not asking. He asks her, and she says, I don't know, I don't have any ideas. She's like, just don't do what he wants. So I, I we're getting a little afield here. But I, yeah, I think Sansa in general, uh, last uh, the end of this season, uh, has sort of come along uh, you know, into sort of her own kind of... Mm, yeah, she's sort of come into her own, right? She sort of is confident in her own ability to uh, take out the people that have harmed her in really horrible ways, actually, which is kind of messed up. Uh, what she does to Ramsey at the end is pretty messed up. I think everyone will agree. 
Do you think John stopped beating on Ramsey in order to let Sansa kill him? Knowing mm, that full nah. well that she was going to kill him? Nah. I don't I don't think he did. Well, I mean, he killed his brother right in front of him. I think he would have probably beaten him to death if Sansa hadn't shown up. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. And she did. And she said, hey, stop. So he was like, all right. And then she killed him anyway. Okay, so John and Sansa have a scene before she talks to Littlefinger, which seems to make it all copacetic. Like she says, you're a Stark to me. You deserve the Lord's Chamber. You did all this work to get here. Uh, and then he says, we have a ton of enemies. We got to stick together. And they have an, a nice little moment where they smile about winter. Mm-hmm. And then she goes and talks to Littlefinger. Yeah. So the the scene with Littlefinger is the one I want to talk about because I don't know that I believe Littlefinger here. I mean, not that we should ever believe anything he says, but he seems to be, you know, it's like confessing his love for something that we obviously have known for quite a while, right? I feel like we knew he had the hots for her for like a pretty long time. He says that she knows he's had the hots for her. I don't think she knew that. He did too. He said he's, he, he says... And I'm trying, I'm going to have to paraphrase, but I, in my memory, he says, I want what I've always wanted, which is to be on the Iron Throne and, and for you to be by my side. They've already made out once. Uh, Yeah, I don't know that she necessarily was into it, though. It was more like he kissed her and she was like, what the fuck is going on? Uh, so I don't know. I don't know that she knew that he wanted her so badly, although I think we as the audience knew. Okay, so what did you see in this scene that bothered uh, you? Or I, I just don't like. I don't understand Littlefinger's. If all his plans have somehow been building towards him getting on the Iron Throne and her being there, I don't think he's doing a very good job of executing his own plans. I don't think that that's the point of the scene, and I, I am led in two directions based on this scene and the later scene involving Sansa and John and Littlefinger. So in this scene, he says. Um, the North is never going to follow John. Like, you should be in charge in the North. You're the true-born Well, she's Stark. the one with the name, right? Right. You're the true-born Stark. We should sit on the Iron Throne together. They're never going to follow him. Be with me. We'll take over the world kind of thing. You know? And I don't think he's professing his love in the instance of just, like, his characters breaking down. I think it's a calculated game to get in her head if he thinks he knows what's going to happen later in the show, which we could just jump to, I guess. So the the later scene in the, uh, is it a throne room? I don't know what the hell. That's Whatever. their, like, uh, the hall, I the guess. The hall, yeah. And and John is getting people to yell about the king in the north again. Oh, so, okay, so John, we shouldn't gloss it over. It's a pretty big scene. No, 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 I know. I, I'm just saying, you know, that's what's happening, right? He's He's trying to get fealty from these houses that were, that basically told him to, like, get out of here. Only in order to fight the Night King. Like, his right. only concern is to fight the Night King. Lady Mormont changes it into, hey, you guys, the Starks are back. We need to support the Starks. And I don't care that his name's St- Snow. We should follow John. Why don't they, sh- why, you know, is she going to be pissed? Is Sansa going to be pissed that they're going to be like, let's follow John, even though he's not a Stark? And then Sansa, who was ignored in a war council previously, is now ignored again. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I don't know. It is it is interesting, uh, at least, you know, that scene. I mean, she and Littlefinger share a look there, for sure, at the end, right? Right. At the beginning of it, of that look, it's kind of like, screw you, dude. Remember, you said they wouldn't follow the guy. Right. And then either there's a look at the end that's either like, I'm upset now that they're following the guy, or, Told oh, you. no, Littlefinger's going to be plotting against him. Oh, uh, I think... It- probably a little of column a and a little of column b there uh i don't i think anyone in this world should probably never trust anything about Littlefinger, <laughs> based on his past actions uh so yeah i don't know it's a it's a really interesting scene uh especially in light of some of the revelations that show up later in that episode or is that right after that i think it's uh right after that but so how do you feel about them kind of re introducing the Rob Stark motif do you, does it to you make you think that John is basically set up to die again now that he's a, especially because he sent away his safety blanket of resurrection with Melisandre 
Right. So yeah, let's talk about her um, and kind of what's up with the Lord of the Light these days. Uh, I think finally she got some comeuppance. I've been kind of mad about that character for a while. Uh, it sort of seems like she's given everyone pretty crap advice uh, and has never had anything bad happen to her because of it. Right? She basically told Stannis, hey, we got to march. And uh, he's like, all right, let's go. And then he just, he's like, we got to kill your your only child because there's no other way. And then he just dies. And she's like, nah, peace. Other people will keep listening to me even though I give crappy advice. Like, I don't know why anyone would trust her ever again. And this seems like the first time stuff is finally coming back to nest at her feet. Well, no one in the group knew that she had killed um, Stannis' daughter, right? Sure, sure. Right. Well, like, you know, finally someone figured it out. Yeah. Um, I think that it's interesting that she tries to lay it at the feet of misinterpretation. Yeah. Total cop out, right? She goes, you know, I can only see what I can see and I have to try to interpret it. Well, we haven't heard that from uh, from um, the dude that's with Beric or the other Lord of Light follower that's with Daenerys. Neither one of them's like, hey, yeah, you know, visions are visions. One of them's like, oh, I just resurrect this guy and drink a lot. And the other one says, oh, no, Danny, you know, we'll support Danny. Of course we'll support Danny, you know? Yeah. She's the only one that seems to be trying to interpret the Lord of Light. Right. She's trying to read the will of you know, a a god ostensibly. And one would say then that maybe that puts her ahead of the pack into the true believer column, especially given her uh, revealed age. Or is that the sin of pride, Andrew, and pride goeth before the fall, thinking you know what God wants? Um, She said she doesn't know. She said she only can... But, and yet she still tries to tell people what to do based on what she sees, right? Yeah, well, clearly she's important, otherwise they would have hanged her. Sure. Well, I believe uh, she is probably headed back to the Riverlands uh, and possibly to meet up with Arya. That's my guess. Interesting. Yeah. What would you see with her and Arya? Uh, I don't know what's going to happen between them, uh, but I do know that there was a line at one point when Arya and her met the first time uh, where she said, I'll see you again. When did they meet the first time? Uh, when Arya and the Hound were running or leaving uh, the people down there. Oh, right. When they were captured. Mm-hmm. And she like was happened to be passing by at the time or whatever. Uh, and she looked at Arya's face and he's like, oh, we'll cross paths again. And Arya's like, no, I'm never going to see you again. Oh, interesting. So she clearly has to now go run into Arya, which means, you know. John like that. did the right thing. Although it still makes me nervous that John has no safety blanket of resurrection. <laughs> uh, I mean, sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's just like a normal person. No one should have a blanket of resurrection. It seems kind of unfair. <laughs> well, well Beric has been resurrected a couple times. Yeah. And he's a nobody doing yeah. nothing. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, well, it'll be interesting to see what happens with him, too. And the Hound and them, they seem like they're headed north now. That's well, weird. they clearly are meant to join up with Arya as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll be an interesting one. Do you think she forgives the Hound? I think she does. Yeah, yeah, they seemed cool. I think, I think that she says, oh, well, I left you to die. You died. You've been reborn, you know. Yeah. He sort of seemed like he almost had his stuff together at the end of uh, that episode with him and the priest and the little village town. Plus, we still need Clegane Bowl. Man, get hype. Let's all get hype. But no, I think Clegane Bowl is not going to happen now, sadly. Why? It is it is too unlikely now, based on the trajectories of those characters. There's not going to be a trial by combat now, right? Cersei has no reason to put Clegane against Clegane. It seems super unlikely. I just think that there's a war coming and then they may meet. Sure, sure. It, it, look, I'm not going to say it's impossible and what is hype may never die, but it's... Nah. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. No Euron Greyjoy in the finale. Yeah, a little interesting, right? Uh, I mean, it does take a long time to build ships. Uh, I understand that. And apparently... Just Theon and Yara stole a bunch of them somehow. 
Uh, but you know, with all the the time, the supposed time that has passed in between various scenes in this episode, one could have assumed that there would be uh, some ships or him involved somehow. Okay, so are we done with Sansa and John? I I'm yeah 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 I'm, we can move on. I don't know. We sort of covered him and her. We covered the Melisandre. I think we've covered the North pretty good. Uh, is there anything you want to talk about in the Riverlands? Uh, did you? I mean, there was so that's a lot of the, the Riverlands is where a lot of people are like, look, this is just fan service because Arya is just murdering people and it doesn't make any sense. It totally makes a lot of sense. I'm yeah. <laughs> her, her her like mission in life was to go get trained to assassinate people for for five seasons. Yeah, and then people complain when it happens. No, yeah, she. I, so I do think it's a little bit unearned that she somehow learned to wear faces. They never really showed that she gained that skill. Uh, but you know, look, she was able to cut the face off that one girl. She can cut a face off another person. I. I believe it. Uh, it's just, uh, the yeah. I, I think that's totally fine. Uh, I would have liked again another you know like little acknowledgement of some time passage there, um, but I think it was fine. Also, the way man, the way she does it, pretty cool. <laughs> Makes him eat his kids. Suck it, eat that pie. <laughs> man, I don't know. Pretty I, messed up. I really hope for a larger end to Walder Frey. Yeah, I don't know. He got his, though. Look, being made to eat your own kids is pretty messed up. I don't know. Cartman did it on South Park. Yeah, it's super messed up. <laughs> uh, also, I, we're going to talk about the books here a little bit. I think there is a theory that is called the Frey Pies, where this exact thing actually may have happened in the books. May have happened or... Happened. Uh, they mentioned Frey pies in the books, but I thought it was because the Freys were famous for just gigantic like meat pies or something like that. So the man that is famous for the gigantic eating all the time is Wyman Manderley, uh, sort of the fat guy with the white hair who shows up in the north. Uh, the implication in the books is that he is the one who bakes the Frey children. It's not the same children as in the show but he bakes two of those Frey children into pies and serves them to the other Freys uh, at his house when Davos is there uh, in the books. Oh, that's right. I totally forgot about Davos going to the Manderleys. That's right, to try and get Stannis' support. Oh, so the, the implication is there that uh, there's a this big northern conspiracy going on and that uh, Wyman Manderley uh, has these two Frey... Uh, wards there ostensibly you know from walder uh and learns about what happens and you know the north remembers and all this sort of stuff happens and basically he kills those two makes food out of them and feeds them to uh, a bunch of people uh on like the bolton slash fray side of that alliance up there so in the books they've implied that the glovers the manderleys and a whole bunch of other people are secretly waiting and plotting for the downfall of the boltons yes that would uh, make more sense than what happened in the show um i don't know i think it's all right uh the i, I don't dislike the way the show did it um but it's it's more that in order to do the plot that they did in the show or the, the plot they did in the show takes a lot less characters and character development time sure yeah you get to say manderly you can have the character but we don't have to go to manderly's you don't have to explain that there are phrase there you don't have to you know there's a lot of stuff they have to cut out and it's just it this episode was literally like let's trim the fat you guys everyone will not believe how many people die right now yeah exactly they don't want to add more characters at this point so i think this was a neat way to incorporate that fun thing there's also no direct confirmation of that stuff, although it's fairly well implied by two people having been missing for a really long time and Wyman Manderley being like, I don't know what happened to them, you guys. They were with me, and then they weren't. Hmm, really weird. <laughs> uh, so I think there is some, you know, some pretty strong evidence that that's what happened, but it's never been confirmed, and this seemed like a fun way to work that theory into the show. Now... 
um, Jamie returns to King's Landing while it's still on fire. Yeah. Braun disappears, even though we love Braun every time we see him. Uh, um, and yeah. he is there for Cersei's coronation while she's wearing Imperator Friosa gear. <laughs> I don't know. She didn't shave her head and paint the black stripe across her face yet. Uh, but I think it's pretty interesting, at least, uh, that Cersei literally did the exact thing that Jaime killed the Mad King for. So she's now the Mad Queen. Yeah, sure, sure seems like that to me anyway, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, does he... Jamie's reputation was ruined because he, you know, the Kingslayer, right? Everyone calls him the Kingslayer. He's the Kingslayer because he killed the previous king because he was going to burn the city of King's Landing. Cersei sort of seems like she just burned a whole bunch of people for, you know, I mean, Cersei thinks she had reasons, but you can say that that was quite an overreaction. Now, in the previous episode, he said he would do anything to get back to her. Now that he's back to her, does that hold true or does he flip flop again and say, you know, Brienne tried to make me a good man. I'm going to be a good man. I got to kill my sister. I don't know, you know. Uh I th- I think that you know, it it's a it depends on how you see Jamie's arc going, right? It sort of seems like he and Cersei have kind of clashed in their opinions recently. Um you know, he says that he loves her uh and would do all, you know, anything for her as he did uh during that siege of River Run. Uh, but also, he did want to sort of be a good person, right? He tried to honor his oath to Brienne by taking the castle without killing everyone. Um, so, you know, I think the the, the Jamie's personal struggle is going to resolve one way or the other here. And one way probably leads to him murdering Cersei, and then the other one, I don't know. Just like Jumps out a window after Tom and... Yeah, maybe. I don't know. That's real weird. Uh, I think that'll be an interesting plot point that we'll get uh, coming up soon, probably. All right, and we finally got the ending to the Tower of Joy, thanks to Bran. That's right. Finally get to see that Jon Snow is not Ned Stark's son. Uh, Which has although been, It's funny, though, that it's like to you and I, because we've been book readers for so long and we talked about the book so much, it's like, okay, finally we got here. We they're got just going to finally they're going to confirm it, right? Stuff that we've suspected for so long. Finally, they're just going to say something about it. Uh, I thought it was very interesting that apparently a lot of people, when watching the show, came away with the uh, notion that Ned Stark was still the father, but he had had incest with his sister just like Jamie and Cersei did. How was that implied at all? It isn't. (laughs) That's the thing that I thought was crazy. I was reading some stuff on the internet about the episode, and multiple people posted that uh, on Reddit. They were like, hey... Uh, I was watching the show with people, and they all thought that Ned was still the father. And I was like, they were not paying attention. Dimwits. Yeah. Uh, So, no, uh, Ned Stark is not the father. That was the secret the whole time. Uh, Ned Stark's sister is the mother. And and we basically know that it was Rhaegar Targaryen. That seems to be the implication. Because she tells Ned to protect the baby from Robert Baratheon, who would have killed it if he had known that it was Rhaegar's kid. Well, he uh, we don't hear all the dialogue in that scene, so it's hard to know exactly what she said. But she definitely says, protect him. And she says, promise me, Ned. Uh, and I think we can draw a pretty direct line there, saying, okay, so protect him means, you know, he raised him as his son even if it meant dishonoring his own marriage. Uh, and, you know, she he promised, right, because it's his sister. But I, I think the implications are real interesting if you take the fact that all the people in the North were swearing allegiance to the king whose name is Stark. But they said his name is not Stark, so it doesn't matter. They, yeah, and, well, but no, right, because it doesn't the way that stuff works in that society, isn't it you're, you're part of your father's house? More right. specifically, they said Ned Stark's blood runs through his veins, so we should Which, trust him. Right, and that's totally not true. Right? Are people, you know, if, would people still be interested if it was uh, Lyanna Stark's blood that ran through his veins? I kind of think they might not be. 
So here's where you get real nervous about Sansa. Bran shows up, tells Sansa and John. Sansa turns on John, and now John's dead again. Yeah, yeah. You could definitely see that path happening, right? The kind of you know, oh, he's a you know, he tells her he's a Targaryen. Oh no, everyone knows what those crazy Targaryens have done. Uh, look at that girl over there burning all these cities with these dragons. Look at that old king before burning that whole, trying to burn that whole city. Uh, man, I don't know if we want to trust this guy. Yeah, puts him in a real not great place. He just got all these people to follow him based on his name being tied to his father, and his father is someone else. With a possibility of shortened episodes left, I had hoped to see some sort of cohesion somewhere in the story saying, like, you know what? No, the North is tied up. The family of Starks are going to be the family of Starks. You know, they they support each other. You know, once they're all together, it doesn't matter. This part is solid. You know what I mean? And there still mm -hmm. is some, if you read into stuff, there's still some way to think like, well, they could throw the plot into a sp spiral again, but I just don't think they have time. Well, they've said, uh, you know, no more than 15 episodes or something, right? It's like, two seven episode seasons or something did left. you catch why they're just cutting it down and stopping i don't think there was i think they said this was the length of time we wanted the seasons to go we didn't want to pad it out after padding it out for five years i mean i don't know that they've padded it out for five years i think a lot of what happened was fine i think episode i think season five is the only one i would take direct umbrage with the rest of it was fine. All right, so how many houses are now gone? Uh, Tyrell. Uh, Frey. Uh, Bolt, Bolton. So Lannister, kind of. Uh, I don't know. They unless... still have a pretty big army and stuff, though. No, but the uh, the future of the houses, I guess. Unless Tyrion or Jaime have kids again. Kevin sure. and his kids are dead, so there's well, no I... more Lannisters. I I don't think there's anything stopping Jamie from having kids. No, I don't think there is. I'm just saying, like, currently, as the houses stand. Sure, yeah. People with heirs. People with heirs left. So yeah. Bolton's gone. Tyrell's gone. Uh, The Dornish family, technically gone. Yeah, yeah, there's not a lot of them left. Uh, there's all those girls, but I guess it's okay to be a girl and rule in Dorn. Oh, excuse me. So, uh, that seems to be all right. Also, let me just tell you, that scene in Dorne where Olena told those stupid sand snakes to shut the hell up was the greatest scene in all of Game of Thrones. Those damn girls were the entire reason I hated season five, and her just telling them, do you have anything to say? No, shut the hell up, was so good. Oh, gives me life. That was the best part. So, so good. I mean, it's pretty great that she's just going to be on a revenge bender for yeah. the rest of the show and just tell everyone to be quiet because yeah. she doesn't care. I want her to just issue sick burns to every person around her for the rest of the show. That old lady is the best. My favorite character for sure. I'm going to be so sad when Sam kills her or whatever. This dumb thing is going to happen. Sam? I don't know. I'm just throwing stuff out there. Speaking of Sam... He's the only one in that part of the world. What is the deal? Why did they even bother including that Sam thing? Because, man, he had to become a maester. But he didn't. <laughs> Bro, you can't become a maester in one episode. Well, they didn't even say, like, yeah, you're accepted. You're just like, no, go stand in the library. Yeah. He's going to read some books, which is what he was doing before, and maybe he'll find, like, a secret old book that says, here's how you beat the Night King. Yeah, one assumes that's why he's there, right? And yeah. So I guess we've recapped the episode. Now we can get into the predictions or book stuff or whatever because it really Sam being at Old Town, John's uh -huh. position in the North, all these sorts of things definitely point to a future you could guess at. Sure, uh, I think that uh, now the show has truly passed the books in every way. There is no part of the book. Uh, that the show has not eclipsed. Uh, before this episode, there were still some characters that were alive in the books uh, that were also alive in the show, right? Or that the books had killed earlier. 
uh, and the show still had a live. Now, every single person uh, the show has done something with uh, that has been done in the books. So I think we are now truly in uncharted waters here. They didn't happen Definitely. in the same way, but uh, yeah. Well, and the one of the questions is, does George A stop writing or B rewrite and change his stories entirely? Well, you know, you, you can't say what he will do, right? We're not uh, inside his head. But uh, I don't know that he is going to be able to change the overarching plot of where everything is going to go, right? It's The story is the story, one would hope. Uh, and he can't just write out uh, certain major characters or certain major plot points in it. He can change the way certain characters die or the where they go um, and that kind of stuff because the books and the show have diverged so much over the time, right? Like, uh, I believe Barristan is still alive in the books. He was killed in season four. So, you know, there's people that are out there uh, in the book world that may still die, but have a lot of ways to affect things and cause different stuff to happen before they do. There's an entire subplot in the books about a fake guy pretending to be a Targaryen. Well, potentially fake, we don't know. Uh, a guy pretending to be a Targaryen, uh, if he's pretending, uh, who is invading Westeros right now, like at the end of book five. Uh, and he's not Danny; he's someone else. So, yeah, and, and that's no... not in the show at all, which is good because it seems to be potentially irrelevant. Yeah, it makes no sense. I mean, he just sort of dropped it in at the end of book five. He's like, hey, yeah, some guy with a Targaryen flag is like invading or something. Well, I mean, it wasn't dropped in at the end. They sort of had built that character up over the course of the entire book uh, and some of book four. But yeah, I mean, it's a it seems like, uh, at least based on where the show is going, that that character's arc will not come to much. Okay, so irrespective of the books, any predictions or thoughts for the future going next for the show? Um, no, I, I don't like to guess at what will happen too much. Uh, I'm yeah, I'm pretty excited to see where it's going to go. Uh, I think it, there's definitely some you know some challenging hurdles they have left. Bran still being on the one side of the giant ice wall seems like a pretty big problem. I think that it was implied that Benjen left them in an area that they could get through or somehow because, or he left them at the door or something because he was just like, all right, peace, you're at the wall. Yeah, he did leave. But I mean, that they, they got to do something with that. How are they going to get over? Uh, how are they going to get back? They need to address it somehow. That's sort of the major thing I have to think about like in the future. I mean, obviously, you know, I think they're moving towards some kind of end game involving John and Daenerys getting together. Um, do you think that, or do you think that's it? Or do you think that John is still a, a red herring? No, I think that's the end game. I mean, it really feels like it should be at this point. I mean, there's so much invested in those two people. Yeah. It wouldn't make much sense. Yeah. I, I think that's where, you know, the end of the show goes. Um, yeah, we'll see who knows. They could end the show on the two of them shaking hands or something. <laughs> All right. Well, if another book of of these books comes out or people really liked this and the new season comes out, we could we could do this again, either at the end of next season or maybe partway through or heck, even after each episode, depending on the reaction. I don't know that I want to do one after every episode. That seems... I, too much. I was really hoping you'd say that. So screw you people. If you want it, you're not going to get it. Yeah. Well, I, look, I'm not against doing bonus episodes when something piques our interest. I loved it. It was fun. The show's fun. Yeah, and it's a great show. We, people should watch it. It was so hard, by the way, people. We uh, skipped a day in between the recording and last night and tonight and really hard not to talk about it in between. So we still had stuff to talk about on the show. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's kind of funny. It's weird how how it affects our relationship in terms of talking about stuff. You're like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't go too far into this because we should just talk about it on the show. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I think uh, this was kind of a special case, something we both really liked and wanted to talk about. So maybe we'll have more of these in the future, but uh, not all the time, I think. Awesome. Well, 
this was your bonus episode of We Were Gamers. I'm Andrew. And I'm JJ. Have a good night.